Okay, so we're going to continue to refine our search uh, mechanism on our quoter. And uh, now that we've got it working for the text field, we want to add it for the other fields. So we want to be able to search on the uh, author, the provider, and search the tags. And eventually we want the user to be able to set what the search uses. So we're going to code accordingly so we can control which one of the elements is being searched. Uh, I haven't done the interface yet. I've gotten the search working here. So I'll go over that with you. Okay, so uh, first thing I did is I created a set of Boolean control flags. And a flag is a common term for a variable that's a Boolean. It could be either true or false. In this case, we have a flag for each of the fields. And basically, if the flag is true, we'll include it in the search. Uh, if we go back to where we were at the last video, basically, we didn't have these. And we were only going to search on the text area. So these four flags will control the search. Now, to get this to work, uh, I turned them off one at a time and tried each one. So let me go ahead and show you now. Have modified the text, uh, the search code. So here's our search code again, and uh, right here is the master loop that goes through all of the quotes. And we don't want to use multiple loops. We want one loop, and then we'll just test each part of that quote if it's included. So uh, you can see here's the first control flag. And this if statement is what we just did previously. So this does the search on the text field. Now you'll notice that this code is very uh, uh, similar and probably we could refactor it here uh, to uh, make it more efficient, but it works fine. So again, here's the test field, uh, excuse me, the text area, which is where we would test if we have it set. So if this flag is true, we're going to look in the text of the quote to see if we have a match. Here's the expression reg.text quotes q dot text. You've seen that before. If we have a match, we push the uh, index of the quote onto the array. Uh, notice I've changed the console log, so it tells me now that I got a text text match. It gives me the index of the quote. It tells me the search value that I'm looking for, and then it shows me the text of the quote that matches. And now this is important. I've added a variable here called found match, and initially that's false. The reason I want to set this to true now is there's no sense in going through the rest of the fields of a given quote if you've already found out that it matches the criterion. So if I have a match on the text, I'm not going to check the author, provider, and tags again to see if I have a match there. So now if we go down, this block of code tests the author test, uh, the author text field. And you can see that it's a little different because the first thing we do is we say, if not found match. What that really means here is if I did not find a match on the text field, now, if the author test flag is set to true, that means the user told me they want to search the author and the text of the quote, I'll go ahead and search the author. Uh, the rest of the code is very similar, except now, of course, I have the author field here instead of the text field, as we did in the last one. And then again, the log is going to say an author match, going to indicate once more the index and the input string we're looking for, and then it'll show the author which matches. Okay, all this console code I'll disable here because I've already uh, used it to debug, but I want to show you how it works. Okay, all right, uh, then we do the provider test. It's the same way. Again, if we haven't already found a match either in the text or the author, or maybe the user turned those off and we're not searching those, then this will be no match. And then if this flag is set, that means we're supposed to search the provider tag. Now remember, the provider is the person who provided the tag, so that would be the student. So for instance, I'm the provider of the five t uh, quotes that I uh, uh, provided for our set. Okay. 
Uh, the rest of the code is the same. Again, we just change this to say provider matched, and we're returning the provider text that matches. Now, um, the last one is similar, but it's a little different because now we're going through an array of tags. So we have to have an additional for loop, uh, which is right here, that goes through all the tags. And one interesting thing about this is just like we have the found match equals true, we also have a break in here. What the break will do is it'll jump out of the for loop. So if we find a match on, say, the first tag, there's no sense in continuing to check the rest. Again, everything else is the same, except notice that this is a little bit more involved because it not only shows the tags, but it shows the tag that got the match. Okay? The rest of this is pretty straightforward. We have the data set, and then we pass that to the method we already wrote that displays the uh, code. Uh, displays all the quotes in the set. Okay, now, to show you how to test this, I've already got it set to be true, so it's only going to test the text. So let's just methodically go through and test each one with the different flags. Okay, So I've reloaded this. Uh, I've already opened this. It's the console. So again, if you don't remember how to do that, it's just developer and then web console there. Okay, You can see that things are running, so I've already got my feed going. Uh, I'm going to have to add code to clear this blank out here. Um, not really sure why, but when you refresh it, it keeps the old code. Okay, so we're doing a quote test uh, search on the text of the quote. And uh, I noticed that mistakes there, so watch M. All right, and then I come down here and I can see that uh, there's a bunch there. Um, so I. S and uh, I'll just finish out mistakes and so then if we come down here in the console window you can see that it's uh, doing a tag match. You know what I don't think I refreshed or saved my code here in the uh, editor Yep, I forgot to save it. So it's actually still got this set to be true and the rest false because that was the last thing I debugged. So um, because of that, I'm going to go ahead and we'll work with that. I'll just leave that. So now I'm going to go ahead and save it. Uh, whoops. Save all. Refresh. And this time it will do um, the text search. Okay. So again, M, I, S, and notice I had that one tech, uh, a couple of uh, ones that had the word mistake. So mistake, okay. And let's go down here. So you can see how, as I type this in, the uh, search continues with the longer and longer string. And so when we get down here to mistake, it looks like we only have two matches. Uh, and those are being displayed here. So you can see those two. Okay. Now that's kind of good because I know one of my uh, tags also has mistake in the uh, tag. Hopefully one of them be besides these two. So we can show how it got combined. I haven't really tested that thoroughly uh, to make sure that it's working and combining them. I'm pretty certain it is though. Okay. Let's go back. And uh, let's just now do a quick author test. So I'm going to put this to true and this to false. So now I'm only searching for the author field. This time I'll remember to save my code. And uh, then I'll go back into Dreamweaver, I'm sorry, uh, Firefox, and reload. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now we're doing an author. Um, how about, uh, I know Patton is in there somewhere, so P. So again, I got Prince, Napoleon Hill, P.A., Parks, Picasso, Pablo, and then uh, T, so Pat. And uh, looking down there, uh, it looks like Patton is the only one that has P.A.T., 
So let's finish that out. And uh, basically we just got the quotes that have patent in them. And so you can see there's only one, two, three, four of those that Joel provided. Okay. So again, the author search is now working as well. And so again, let me go back. And uh, I already tried the tag test. Remember, I did that by accident. So the only one left to do is the provider. As you can imagine, this is going to work. I've already tested all these, actually. Um, but I just wanted to show you how I did this very uh, methodically. Again, it's really important to have a good work uh, process. Um, you're not going to get very far once things get complicated if you're just kind of randomly trying to do stuff. Okay, so now we're testing our provider. Um, let's, uh, well, let's see, who do we have here? How about uh, my friend uh, Connor Esslinger? So, S L. And so, of course, that comes up E S L. Are there any other ones in there? Nope, that looks like that was uh, a, uh, a single match for him. So, I got all of his quotes there. All right, let's try one more real quickly. Uh, I think we have Calvin Mays in the class. Yep, and you can see that it brought those up. Okay, so now what we want to do is combine them. And uh, let's see what we get here. We should be able to tell that it's working by the output. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, blank this out. Go back into the code. And now I'm just going to set uh, these all to true, so we'll be doing all of them. And we'll just have to be careful and make sure that uh, we can do that. One thing that's really nice about this, though, is because of the way I set up the debugging console information, it tells me which one is a match. So a text match, an author match, a provider match, or a tag match. So that's pretty good. So it'll be very helpful to uh, debug it and make sure it's working. Okay, so here we go. We're now searching all of the fields. Again, we'll reload. And uh, let's start with M. And then we'll just poke around here. So you can see that I got Joel Mercurio as an uh, author there. Uh, Mark Twain as an author. Joel as a provider, sorry. Uh, then a bunch of text matches. A lot of them have that M in them. Uh, let's see. Do we get any tag matches? Yeah, motivational. Okay. So uh, let's just go ahead and continue. How about um, A? So now I've got... Um, scooch down to the end here. So see, there we go. There's the M-A. So we have an author match for Martin Prince, a provider match for Calvin Mays, a uh, text match for uh, Make here, uh, provider matches for James uh, Haman. Uh, Heyman, sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, and then an author match for uh, Mark Twain. So you can see this is working pretty well. Let's keep going here. So MR, I want to get Mark in there. So I got Mark Twain. And I thought we had a student named Mark. I guess not. So it looks like that uh, was the only Mark in there. And it turns out I don't have any quotes that are about Mark either. Like on your Mark, that sort of thing. Let's go down and look at our results just to make sure. So, yep, yeah, once we got to MAR, it looks like it was all, uh, well, no, Martin Luther King. So, Mark basically made uh, it just to Mark Twain. That was the only matches. All right. So, we've now got this all working. And uh, I'm going to end here. But as you can imagine, the next phase will be to add some checkboxes here so the user can control which of the fields are included in the search. And um, that won't be too difficult. I'll probably have more problems making it look decent than actually implementing it. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and they're helpful. Um, you know, things have gotten pretty complicated now. And if you don't work like I showed you, 
in a very uh, regular and kind of methodical way, it's very easy to get lost. So uh, probably the most important thing that I can teach you is that, uh, not the content. It's not hard to learn the coding, but to you know, have the logic in your head and to work methodically, make a change, test, make a change, test, um, you know, and, and think ahead about how to do stuff, okay? So uh, I'm off the soapbox now. Hope you're enjoying your 4th of July weekend. Take care.